in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and welcome again to Living in the Word. We are so glad that you're with us today because God wants to reveal to us the role that our children play in our homes. Do you struggle with your children? Are you having problems with them in your life? Today's message is going to help us to understand that if they fulfill their role, then God will dynamically change them for His glory. Join us right now. But today, our society... Uh, has come to a place where we have changed roles. And because of the breakdown of families, it has become our world's greatest catastrophe of all times. A tsunami cannot match what the breakdown has fa of family is creating. No storm, no hurricane. We look at these things as great catastrophes, but when we really look into families today, it's the greatest catastrophe of all times. It is the thing that has caused great despair and destruction in our life and has caused our society to come to a place where it is right now that many of us may be dismayed with. A lot of us are embracing it. But because of the breakdown of family, it has caused a greater problem. And we are here today to reestablish the family. Our teenagers today, they battle so many, many things in their lives today. All the teenagers say amen. Yes, yes. Teenagers today battle so many things in their life because there is a responsibility that they have. And I'm here to let you know, teenagers, there is a responsibility as a child that you have in your home. There is a responsibility that you must follow every day of your life. And if you fulfill your role, the family will become a lot stronger. It will fulfill the things that God has for it in our lives. Amen? So I want us to look at that responsibility. So if you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to turn to the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And we're going to start in our reading there this morning so we can see the plan that God has for our lives. Amen? If you need... Some support. There are so many great people in this church that will support you and help you to uh, find Ephesians chapter 6. And when you get to Ephesians chapter 6, just, just shout out amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If I can just find two more people, we will enter into the word of God. Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 1. Are we there? Amen. And the Word of God says this, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read that one more time. Children, Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with the promise, that it may be well with you, and you may live a long life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. So we are living in days of changing values. Today in our life, there are so many changing values. We have settled for some things in our life that we really need to talk about. It, it is like a, a, a science project that they had done with a frog. They, they took a kettle of water. So you take an environment, and in that environment, they settled, they, they settled this frog in this environment. And the frog was happy in the water. It, it, it sat there. It, it did some, you know, it, it swims around like it always does. But what happened is that in this project is that they changed the environment. So they put a fire underneath this kettle of water that they had this frog in, and they slowly turned up the temperature. So when you're in an environment and, the, and, the, and, and things begin to change slightly, you don't recognize it. You continue to stay in the environment. And, and as the experiment goes along, they turn it up further and further, and before the frog has a sense of responding because the situation has gotten too hot for it to hop out of where it's at, it ends up boiling itself to death. 
And today in our society, we, the culture has put us into a boiling water. And we're finding ourselves on boil, and we're finding it hard to get out of the situation that we are in. And today in our society, in our culture, we're not responding to the things that we need to be responding. And out of this boiling water, rebellion has come into the world. There is a rebellion that has come in, and we have accepted rebellion as a way of life for us. And that must change for us in our lives. Because it is important for us to understand that rebellion is not of God. And our children today, and we as children, have so much rebellion in us, but we don't recognize it. We find it to be normal. And I'm here to let you know today, rebellion is not normal. The Bible says that rebellion is the spirit of witchcraft. So if you don't like witches, <laughs> you don't like rebellion. Because you, you cast a spell on people through your rebellion. And it causes a disruption in the kingdom of God. Now, it's so, it's so normative to us because we live in it every day long and we try to deal with it. And we can no longer deal with the spirit of rebellion. We must speak to it. We must come against, to it, against it. And we must change the culture from it. And the only way we're going to begin to do that is as children, we begin to address these things in our lives. Amen? We need to address them because of this rebellion. You have to understand that there are over 10 million children a year who abuse their parents. 10 million children a year abuse their parents, whether they're physically abusing them, emotionally abusing them. Children are constantly abusing their children, and the rates are getting higher and higher every year. And we must address this and deal with this issue in our life because it is important for us to understand, where is this rebellion coming from? Our children's music today project to them a lifestyle of how they are to live. They're listening to it. Everyone will tell you, I like the beats, but let me tell you something. It is not the beats that you're hearing behind the music that you're listening to. The beat caught you, but there's a story in the beat that you're listening to. And you, you can't keep fooling yourself about what you're seeing or hearing because they're projecting, you know, when I was growing up, it was, hey, hey every, every, you know, buying the music, rap music, especially today, was all about, uh, you know, cop killer. You know, you're going to be a cop killer, kill the cops, you know, and all these other things. But today it's a little bit more than that with videos and all these other things because now in videos they posture themselves. Don't you tell me what to do. Don't say to me. So there's a spirit that is being spoken to our children today that they're embracing and, and they're loving and they're hearing it. So it's going in their eyes and in their ears, and they even begin to start to speak these things that they hear in their life. So they are causing our children to live a way that is helping them to continue to support a spirit of rebellion. So with this rebellion, we have lost respect for one another. We have lost respect for our elders. We have lost respect for people in our life that we don't have any value for others because I'm the most important thing in the room right now because I'm here. Scripture teaches us to think more highly of others. And we don't think highly of others. We think of ourselves. When we're walking down the street on the sidewalk, move out of my way. Days where young men would allow young ladies and, 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 and women to, to have the right of way. No, I got the, my own right of way right now. You step into the street. Let me walk by you. When you would go to school, yes, Mrs. Jones. No, no, Mrs. Jones. Today in school, you'd be lucky if you get a nod from a kid when you ask him a question. And if you ask him, he'll yell at you and scream at you, don't you, why are you picking on me? All I'm asking from you is to answer a question. So much rebellion built up in our children today is why our school systems are failing. I'd like to blame teachers, too, like everybody else wants to blame teachers. But because of a spirit in our children and their unwillingness to receive wisdom and understanding, they're in a full-blown-out rebellion. So they find themselves doing things that are, you know, not normal, that we would find to be normal, uh, uh, in school, uh, fighting and lighting uh, matches and, 
and getting involved in sexual activities in school. All these things that you wouldn't, you know, not that they didn't happen, but now are more become the norm. Now have become the things that are acceptable. Teachers in classrooms accept bad behavior because they can't control 32 kids in their classroom who are acting out. And the one who wants to learn is having difficulty learning because of everyone else who just wants to do whatever they want to do. No respect. No respect and no honor. No, no love. So these things are important for us. And in this day of rebellion, our children don't obey their parents. Today we could probably rewrite it and say, parents, obey your children. As a society has changed the way how we live as parents and as adults. And I know that resonates with you because today our, our systems have changed it around to get parents to be afraid of their own children. Our culture has created an environment where children have all the rights and parents have no rights. Yeah, I don't want to preach that because I go way down deep in that one. So there is a thing that this culture has created this, to give parents no power and has transferred the power from uh, parenthood to children. Children who can't think for themselves, who need us to give them everything, now they call the shots. Come on, somebody. And if we're going to build a, a family or a culture of people, we must get everyone back into the right role of their lives so that we can live the way God had intended us to live. There is a plan for how we have been attended, and the Word of God has shown us how to do that. Parents, this is why it's important for you to pick up your Word. I see a lot of young parents in the house. It is important for you to pick up your Word so you know how to raise your children. Stop looking into a culture to raise your children. If you look into the culture, you're going to get burned. If you look into the culture, you're going to raise what you get. So let's save all the young ladies in the house. You know, all these, uh, the older women, we talked to you about helping these younger ladies. Let's help them get back into the word so that they understand how to raise their children in a godly manner. Don't let the world and the culture begin to tell you how to raise your children. It's important for us to raise our children the right way. You have to understand that it is important for us to live the life that we have been called to because parenting has been devalued. Because parents don't have any value today. We need to be able to change that. Children have all the rights today. The rights to express their sexual preferences today. The rights to express their sexual activities today. We have given children the, the rights to, to do the things that they want to do in their life. We have given the children the rights for not having to be punished by their parents. We let them understand what they need to do. But we need to change that today in order for us to have the right things. So if you are a child here today and you're living your and I don't care how old you are, this, number, this does not have a number. You could be 45 and still living with your mama right now. Come on, somebody. We are faced with a culture that is living in rebellion. And we have to deal with it today. We have to deal with it. You have to understand that that rebellion could then be created through you in your lifestyle of how you lived. Even though you're an adult today, living on your own, in your own place, there has been a spirit of rebellion that has probably been cultivated in your life, in your own home, and that needs to change today. We need to bring ourselves to a place where we are to be the center of our lives, and I understand my role as a child. A child of God, a child under parents, or a parent, but I must understand my role, and I have to understand my responsibility. And I have to take personal responsibility in my life for my actions and the things I do, because I am called by God to live this way. And we read it right here in Ephesians, so all you children in here know that I've read this in Ephesians, and I understand that I have a responsibility. And that responsibility is to obey my parents. 
and to honor my father and to honor my mother. So some of us who are having children and we're having a rough time with our children, it's called the big payback. <laughs> it's called the big payback because of some of the things that we have done in our lives come back to us. So we have to understand that as we look, look into the word today, these rules have been reversed and we have to change the structure. So Paul the apostle speaks to the church. Why does Paul speak to the church? There is a responsibility upon the church to teach the role of family. We are here to help everyone to understand the role of family and to be the demonstration of a godly family. Amen? We must show how we are to live our lives out in God and to raise godly children. Sometimes we make ungodly decisions that doesn't make you an ungodly family. You just made an ungodly decision. And a godly family knows how to correct things when they come out of order. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? When, when you're living in the things of God and you understand that, people make decisions every day. Husbands make their own decisions sometimes. Wives make their own decisions. Children. But when someone makes a decision that's outside of the will of God, we know where to turn to in order to correct that. We turn to the Word of God, and the Word of God brings correction to when we step outside of the things that we should do. So it's important for us to understand that as we're raising godly children in our life, the, the, how important it is for us to embrace God's Word to bring change. Now, some of us are saying, my kids are 18, they're not listening to me. They're not, well, if they ain't listening to you, there's, there's an issue. We'll talk about that in a minute. All right? So there are some things that you have to understand. You cannot give up on the Word of God because the Word of God never gives up on you. Don't give up on it. I don't care. If today things aren't the way you want them to be in your homes, we're, today we're making a decision to say we're turning back to the Word of God and we're going to live by that Word and that Word is going to radically change our life. You can't do it. God has to do it. And when you turn to God, and when you're all in with God, things change. Get this. Get this right now. Are you following God, or is God following you? Don't answer that too loud right now. Are you following God, or is God following you? And you really need to make that determination in your life. Because if you want the perfect will of God, I'm telling you today, you better stop following God. Don't let God follow you. You follow God. Allow God to come into your life and bring change and everything that you need to happen in your life. Because it will be the better thing for you and your family to help you to grow. So there's two things that we see here in our text today that are important. That a child owes their parent. The two things is they need to obey. Children, you need to obey and to honor. And I know behind that there's a lot of questions. Well, when should I? How long should I do that? When, when is this process ever end in my life? As long as you have parents, <laughs> that process is honoring and obeying. Even, you, may, you may not live in their home, but you shall still honor them and obey them in some form or some way. So we need to have to understand that it's very important for us to live in this principle that God shows all of us how to live. That's honoring, obeying the Lord as children of God. We need to honor him and obey his word every day of our life. So when we look at these things, they become true. So let's look at that text in verse 1. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for it is what? Right. Children... Obey your parents in the Lord, for it, it is right. It is the right thing when you obey and honor your parents. It's the right thing to do. So Paul addresses the church on this because he wants us to understand we have a responsibility. You have a responsibility in your life. Then Paul writes these terms that we would help us to know that we are not, that, that, that our children in their role and their function does not make them equal to us. Even though we are equal as people, their role is not equal to my role. God, a transcending God, an almighty God, even though I was created in the image of God, I don't have all the rights that God has. He can transcend 
and come down and walk among us, but he is still God Almighty outside of that. So I can never say that I am God because he's the only God. And so even in our roles, our children, as children, we must understand that I, even though I am compatible, I'm a part of, I don't have the same rights as my parent has. And because I don't have those rights, I must obey. I may not like it. <laughs> I may not like what's being said. I may not like what's being told to me, but I must honor them and obey that. I must submit myself to that. Why must I submit myself to that? Because we have to understand that when we submit to our parents, when we obey our parents, and when we give our parents honor, it glorifies God. Because when you don't obey your parents, you don't obey God. Because the parents are the image and the likeness of God. And so every time we come in disobedience, and when every time we come in and we don't honor our parents, we tell God, I don't care what you say. This is why this is important for all of us across the board. How important it is for us to obey the word of God and hold on to God. Because as Christian parents, it is important for us to be the filter for our children so that our children don't get broken in the process. It's like panning for gold. I don't know if anyone's ever seen Panning for Gold. They, they scoop up the sand off the bottom, and they're allowing the, the water, the Holy Spirit, to flow through as they're shaking, and they're looking for the finer purities as they're filtering out the things that aren't good. See, you don't want to just throw everything. I don't see anything. I don't see anything. We, want, we don't want to break our children. So when you read in verse 4, don't provoke your children and, and things like that. We don't want to break our children. We want to help our children. We want to filter out the bad things that are going on in their life and help them to see the greater things that are in them. As parents, it is our job to be the revealers unto our children, that our children are able to see the goodness of God that is in their life, the value in their life, that our children wouldn't have to go and look into culture to understand who they are or how they should be looked or how they should dress or what they should shape. Take a moment and just look in your own life and see how you've invested in the value of your own children to help them to grow. And the turns and the changes of the things of their life, these things are important for us to understand that if I speak the right things in our life, these things could change our children for God's goodness and his glory. It's important for that, amen? These things will help us to get to the places that we need to be. He gives us two reasons why we ought to obey. The first is to obey them in the Lord. Our children should obey in the Lord. That is saying here that our obedience to God is important. So we're obedient to our parent. We're obedient so to God. The Bible also gives us a great instruction of how to raise our children. Just think about that. If you don't know how to raise your children, the Bible is a great place for you to go to look up things in the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs is the book of wisdom. And in there, there's a lot of things that can help us to be good parents and to help to train our children. Just think about this. The, the Jewish culture was, as we read in Deuteronomy, when you rise up in the morning, they would share the word of God with their children. It says when you sat around the table, you would share the word of God. They wouldn't share just stories. They would share the word of God with their children. And they would say, and the word of God says, and the Lord thy God, may his face shine upon you. They would read the word of God. They wouldn't just say what they, their experiences for the day. They would actually tell their children what God says about them. Reminders, when they sat around the table, God wants to remind you who you are. Not what I think you are, but let me remind you who you are. How many of us would have got some value in our life if somebody had told me who I was instead of the things I was doing? How that would have helped and changed our life in such a way that would glorify the kingdom of God. And so they would do that. So when they laid down at night, you would sit by their beds, and you just didn't say prayers, but you said, let the Lord God rest upon you and bring you peace and joy. And so our children, as Scripture says, raise up your ch child in the ways to go, so when they get old, they will not depart from it. Right? And so a lot of us like to use that. Well, you know, our kids are going to leave someday. Yeah, but we never want our kids to leave from the Word of God. 
We want to teach them the word of God so that when our kids do depart, that the word of God is what convicts them to do the right thing. No word of God in, no conviction out. That's why we need the word of God, because we need conviction. All of us need conviction. I'm a child of God. I need conviction. I need to be in my word so that I can be convicted when I'm outside of the will of God in my life. God needs to, the spirit of God needs to convict me of how I should be doing and living my right of life appropriately in the things of God. And so the word of God is important for that. So we need to turn to the word of God to help ourselves to grow and our children to grow. So let's look at a couple of verses uh, in Proverbs. We're going to look in Proverbs. There's many of them. So I, I encourage you, there's 30 Proverbs, uh, 31. So you can, uh, Proverbs, you could go take a proverb a day and read a proverb a day with your children for every month and, and just, you know, read out through the whole year. And the wisdom, because it's a book of wisdom, the wisdom you'll gain and watch your family get strengthened. So Proverbs chapter 1, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8, the Word of God says this, My son... Hear the instructions of your father, and do not forsake the law of your mother. Hear, come on, hear the instructions of your father, and do not forsake the law of your mother. Obey your parents. Obey it. There's some wisdom. <laughs> We've come a long way. I know children are getting younger and younger, having kids younger and younger, but we have to understand there are some of us you know, who are older. We've been through some things. <laughs> Have just a little bit of wisdom. We have just a little bit of something that can help change your life. Amen? So it would be important for you to listen to your parents. Let's look at another one, Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. It says, My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For lengths of days and long life and peace they will be added to you. This is something I've always, as, as a, a young youth minister in my life, uh, being around young teenagers, I love teenagers. I love challenging them. I love just loving on them. I love hearing where they're at, and I love helping them try to change it. It inspires me. And I've always felt this way. I've always felt this way. Th this scripture, I I even the, the great commandment of the Lord, it's to honor the Lord thy God, right? It, honor your, your father and your mother, and all the days of your life, you'll have long life. And I've always said, many years ago, I've been saved over 20 years now, and in those, in those years, when I look at young people dying today, they don't have long life. And, I, and that scripture always just bangs on my head when I, when I see it. It's like children dying younger and younger, more and more young people. They don't have long life. Because it's, it's because of rebellion. It's because they don't honor their parents. They don't respect their parents. And you only, it's the first commandment, the Bible says, it's the first commandment with a blessing. Now, wasn't that a power-filled message? When we really begin to discover and understand the plan that God has for our lives and the things that he's doing in our families and through our children, that our children have an important role, when we discover that, our families will be built family strong. Join us next time as we continue to live in the Word.